When you're looking at the cardiac cycle, you have to determine exactly what's going on. And the way you do this is you first look at your EKG tracing. This is your EKG tracing, your P wave, QRS complex, and your T wave. The very first thing that you need to realize is what are the components that make up systole and what are the components that make up diastole. And the very first thing you wanna pinpoint is where are you in the cardiac cycle? Your systole occurs at the peak of your R wave and it ends at the end of your T wave. And this is your systolic event here. Everything that occurs after the T wave until the next R wave is diastole. And the way I remember this is it's from the R wave to the T wave, and then the T wave back to the R wave. Once we've understood exactly what systole is, remember from the R wave to the end of the T wave, and exactly where diastole is, which is the end of the T wave to the next R wave, it's very important to consider what are the mechanical things that occur. So what's happening to the chambers? What is contracting? What is happening to the valves? So we start off with the P wave, and we know that the P wave indicates what? Atrial depolarization. And so this will start off atrial contraction. And as your atria contracts, there are certain waveforms that you're going to see. As the atria contracts, if you're looking at the pulmonary vein, for example, which is one of our congestion points, or the hepatic vein, it is looking, it's a backseat to the atrium, and it's telling you exactly how flow is. And so when the atria contracts, you're going to have a retrograde A wave. Remember, atrial contraction coincides with the P wave, and then the waveform that you see is an, a retrograde A wave. Why? Because it's going backwards. Why is it going backwards? So in the example here where you have the right atrium, when you have contraction of the right atrium, you will start to see backflow. And that's exactly what that retrograde A wave represents. Systole we know occurs right at the peak of the R wave. And that's when you start to see that the ventricle contracts, it brings the tricuspid valve down. This is the most important mechanical change that occurs. And when it brings that down, it increases the size of your atrium. And by increasing the size of your atrium, you'll have blood move anti-grade. Why? Because the pressure has decreased and now there's a pressure gradient and now you have more flow going into the right atrium. Now you start to have anti-grade flow. Now, as the atrium starts to fill up with pressure, you start to develop pressure, and now it starts to go back up to the baseline. And this is what we call the S wave. It's called the S wave because it occurs during systole. And see how it coincides with that systolic event between the R wave and the T wave. It's very important to understand that when this occurs, your tricuspid valve is closed. Now the next step is after the T wave, when diastole occurs, the very first thing that happens is relaxation. And once the pressure in the atrium is greater than the pressure in the ventricle, then you'll see there's opening of the tricuspid or the mitral valve. And then you have blood that will start to flow and fill up the ventricle. And that's where you see your other anti-grade flow. And that's known as the D wave or diastole. And you need to understand these waveforms very well in order to take full advantage of the congestion cascade. Retrograde A wave, this is your forward flow with the anti-grade S wave and forward flow with anti-grade D wave. This is exactly the same as in the left atrium. When you're looking at the pulmonary veins, you'll see very similar waveforms. When you look at the right ventricle and into the hepatic veins, you will see the exact same waveforms. If you're looking at the IJ and you have a central line, you're going to see the exact same waveforms. However, the convention is a little different because they're looked at as A waves, X descent, and Y descent. And you need to correlate these EKG findings or these systolic and diastolic events to what is happening mechanically to the heart. And that forms the basis of your understanding of these waveforms, which you will use when you're interpreting pulmonary veins and hepatic veins.